I'm here with Nick Sennett. He is one of the partners at the Richard Stromberg Chicago Photography Classes. That is correct. And we're right here in one of your studios, right? Yes. And we got classes going on all around us, and you just got finished teaching a Lightroom class and yes. all sorts of stuff. So well, thank you for doing the interview. And thank you for joining us here at the school. Of it's course. A pleasure. Yeah. Now you're going to be one of our five instructors at the winter conference. It's February 10th. Actually, I think you're going to come help out uh, this summer as well. I'm hoping. And uh, count on it. And and Nick has been there uh, the whole way with us with Out of Chicago, and uh, one of our favorite people. Uh, whether he's helping out or teaching classes, everything. So uh, and and the fact that uh, we have so many instructors that you guys have here that are also teaching at our stuff. So, uh, tell us about everything you got going on here at the school. Oh, it has uh, the past three years since uh, Rick Cass and I took over uh, the school it's gone gangbusters here and I gotta say I love this place uh, we've gone from about 40 students in the kind of the community that we've built to this current session that we have we're upwards towards 198 to be exact That's awesome. so uh, and the only way we've gone from 40 to 198 is not from me it's not from Rick Katz it's from our instructors it's from the community and it's from the support of all of our volunteers. Um, that has been the driving force. And like you've experienced in Out of Chicago, the, the awesome community that Out of Chicago has, has created is we are doing it as well here at the Chicago Photography Classes. Um, that's, that's what you need to succeed and that's what people love. It's not just about learning, it's not just about photography, but it's also the social experience and the community that you've built. Correct. I mean, yes, we have, I don't know, we have 26 different classes, all the way from basic photography all the way to advanced editing and Photoshop with Jim Wilninski. We have tons of classes, but it's that core social community that, that sets it apart, that at Outer Chicago, the conferences, the community that gets together, the classroom community that sees it here, um, it's a it's a beautiful relationship that the school has with uh, Outer Chicago, and we're we're thrilled to be a part of it. Yeah, no, we love it too. And and the setup you got here is awesome. I mean, all, all the printers you have, all the computer labs you have, it's everything anyone would need from learning how to do the photography to editing it to printing it and having a final product here on the walls. Yeah, the the one thing that we will always really strive on at the school is printing. Printing, 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 printing. As you saw, there we have over 12 uh, Epson printers, whether they range from 24 inch wide all the way to 4900s. Um, we love printing here. Uh, there's something, as I tell every student as they walk in the door in the free 90 minute class that we hold every week is, one of the taglines is it's one thing to take a digital picture and put it on Facebook and get a couple of likes. It's a whole different feeling when it comes out of that printer and after you've edited it. That's a, it's a, it's a work of art at that something point. Something you can hold in your hand. Something you can hold, something tangible you can put up on the walls that we have. Um, that's where you get hooked. And that's what hooked me yeah. way back when. Yeah, and, and you were a student here. Right? I was a student. I was a student under Richard, our founder, uh, Richard Stromberg, our founder. I was a student, uh, took photo one, photo two, photo three with him. Uh, I ended up volunteering, uh, volunteering just as our community does as well. We volunteered to help our entry students uh, learn Lightroom. And from there, I got the teaching bug. I love teaching. Uh, and started teaching photo two, one of our intermediate classes. And from there, it just grew. And started teaching all the classes. and. Unfortunately, Richard passed away about four years ago now. Um, so that brings us to where we are today yeah. here at the school. You guys are doing amazingly well, which is great to see. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So at the Winter Conference, February 10th, we've got people teaching architecture, flowers, black and white, creativity, all this stuff. Yep. And I asked you to take what you do so well, which is to teach post-processing in Lightroom, Nick's an amazing teacher. You, you do such a good job in front of, in front of a class. Uh, so your presentation is going to be on using Lightroom to be more creative. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Correct. Um, well, Lightroom is not the, the end all to be all. It is a great program, but you also have to know how bad it is sometimes too. Okay. Um, and if you know where its fault is, you can really make it shine. And you can actually use its faults, and I'll show you some tricks 
uh, during the class where you can use that wonderful tool that everybody loves, that beautiful clone heel mm -hmm. that most people hate. It is an atrocious tool. And would prefer to go to Photoshop. Right? Yeah, would yeah. Go to, prefer to go to Photoshop at that point. Well, I'm going to show you kind of a reverse of that and actually use that tool to actually improve your photos really quick. Um, so the, some of those, those tricks that I'm going to talk about in developing and using some of the tools that you may not be familiar with or you may not know Lightroom can even do. It's amazing how closely uh, Lightroom is with Photoshop and you can actually do a lot of things that you can in Photoshop in Lightroom just by knowing some tweaks and that's kind of what we're going to talk about. Um, it, it won't be of this is the exposure slider. This changes your exposure. It's going to be more about uh, a little more involved and more the artistic side of developing photos and actually envisioning your shot before you take the shot and you want to get that raw photo edited to that point, uh, to your vision. And that's where I always use Lightroom. Um, and that's the, one of the favorite things I like teaching is for students is it is a quick tool to get that vision uh, in a reality. Um, so that's a little bit what, what we're going to talk about. Do you mind going in depth a little bit too? Give me two or three, or maybe it's not from the presentation, but two or three of your very favorite things that you do in Lightroom that it's like, if I didn't have that tool or if I didn't use that technique. Number one, transform tool. Okay. Uh, I shoot a lot of architecture. I shoot a lot of real estate. Um, when Lightroom added the transform tool, I would say around six months to a year ago, um, changed the world. I used to always have to go to Photoshop to straighten up. You're talking about like the upright tool? and the... Yeah, now it's called the transform panel. Oh, okay. Um, and there's an auto button. Number one, if you're shooting houses, if you're shooting architecture, if you're shooting anything that lines have to be straight, mm -hmm. just go to that transform panel and click auto. The world changes. Yeah, um, and even when it was just the old upright tool and you, they, they had an auto feature, it was amazing because you're like, okay, do I need to rotate it? Oh no, I need to actually change the, the vertical perspective. Yep. And it's like, well, which one do I need to do and keep playing with it? And now it's like, boom, just. It's pretty quick. You can even get even further in depth in that panel using the guided function. Mm -hmm. And which we're gonna do during the class awesome. is actually get in deeper into that panel and actually show you how you can really tweak a photo using the guided function because you can go on three different planes and actually tweak the photo how you see it. If you take a photo and you can't get exactly in front of the photo, mm -hmm. like in front of a scene, you can actually use the transform panel to get it so that the photo looks like you're exactly in front of that shot. And I've done that same thing where it's like uh, one of those shots where you're up in the parking garage is looking down on like the L and it's like, well, I couldn't shoot straight down on it, but I can make it look like I was pretty it, much straight above. When exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's what we do the transform panel. Um, other than that, I mean, we do, I go through a lot of panels. Um, that's my number one go-to in the, the style of shooting that I do. A lot of real estate, a lot of architecture shoots, landscape, um, color profiles, the profile. Okay. Um, definitely. Something I try to avoid completely. Um, oh, that, that profile. Okay. And you're adjusting off of the Adobe profile. Right. You can go ahead to one of your camera profiles. So if right. you click on your profile, you'll see Adobe and you can go to one of your camera profiles. We all know the camera profiles, if you're shooting JPEG, great. You know, you got your standard, you got your landscape, vivid, your vivid all that stuff um, that translates to a JPEG, but it never translates to the raw photo. Right, and people, people get confused by that, right? When they bring their photos and they're like, it looks great, and then pssst, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it goes what back that? to their yeah, raw photo. That's, yeah, that's the problem with raw. I always associate raw photos with cookie dough, with chocolate chip cookies. JPEGs are cooked chocolate chip cookies, <laughs> raw is raw cookie dough. I like it. So when you go ahead and try and, when you import your raw photo, it's kind of like, ugh, that raw cookie dough doesn't look very yeah. appetizing. But we can add a whole lot of stuff. And if we really want to one click change that, is you go to your color profile and change it off of Adobe. And you change it to one of your camera profiles and right. instantly you're going to see that photo pop, whether you choose vivid, whether you choose landscape, uh, whether you choose portrait, depending on your camera. Uh, Canon has obviously different profiles than Nikon. Nikon yeah. has different I ones than Fuji. Olympus. It's Fuji. Got really, really good ones. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that. Hey, 
Uh, this is one of my favorite parts about that camera. Is it different? Is it it has profiles? a ton of different profiles. Olympus has a ton of different profiles. Uh, so when you alter your uh, raw photo to one of those profiles, it changes it instantly. Yeah. And it's a really quick way to get going. The other uh, new addition to Lightroom Classic CC is the auto button. Uh, the auto button has honestly improved hundredfold. It's the type of thing you would have told people you're never going to Never. Use yeah, don't. I, up until about a month ago, I was like, don't touch the auto because it just overexposes and it just kills your photo. It's bad. Now I say, you know what, this is a good, if you click auto, it's a pretty good starting point um, for people to start. It gets your photo to where you want to start on it. Uh, it's a one-click start. Uh, is how I format it. It's not finished to me, but to me it's a good one-click start. Right. All right, so the best part about our Out of Chicago events is that we get amazing instructors. They, they give great education, but we always give keep people a chance to try it then too and to uh, to shoot with those yep. instructors so we're not going to have huge computer labs sorry like you have here but we will uh, we're going to do the other thing that you're really known for and we're going to be doing some drip photography tell me about that yeah so uh, myself and my team are going we're going to bring um, some of our drip equipment and we're going to set it up so that you can actually get some photos onto your SD card on the all the participants SD cards to be able to get some of the drip collisions that I'm uh, that I'm still practicing and I will always practice but I love what I do it it's kind of fun it's uh, the drip photography I've evolved over six years and within those six years I figured out how to do this so you're gonna be instantly be able to do this and skip six years of training <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> so you're gonna get the photos that I've worked on six years for and I'm happy to because I love teaching I love being a part of the outer Chicago community I love this community and it's not about retaining all my secrets it's not it's about sharing all my secrets and exposing all the participants to this and how much fun it is and how much joy I get out of it um, that's what matters. And so we're going to share that and you, all the participants are hopefully going to have an opportunity to stop by our little booth. Um, it's going to be staffed by not only myself, but a couple of our other instructors that help me out all the time uh, at the school during drips, uh, drips and drops. And you're going to get to do it and you're going to get to see it and you're going to get to have choice. Do I want smoke in the photo? Do I want a big collision? Do I want a small collision? Do I want just a crown? You're going to have all these different options that we're going to give you. Um, so that's a little bit about the shootout yeah. portion of that. Yeah, and these photos you make are phenomenal and people are just going to have so much fun to, you know, get a chance to set, a, set some of it up themselves, make their own choices and be like, bam, I made that. That is so cool in a short amount of time. And of course, if they want to learn how to set the whole thing up and do it all themselves, you do teach the class too. We do. Right? We do a workshop a couple times a year um, that it's a full two day workshop and about 12 hours of shooting. And so it's all about going around and shooting all these different stages that I do. All, I do all types of liquid photography. I love liquid photography. I love the properties of liquid and freezing liquid and showing movement in liquid. Uh, that's, that's kind of what gets gets Last me going. Last year we did splashes. We were throwing different objects into the water. And, but this year it's drips. It's, it's actually drips. really close up macro. It's all macro. Yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. It's all macro. And exactly what those drops look like when they're hitting the water and they're bouncing back up. And yeah, yep. super excited. To Freezes. Do that. And uh, you can choose different colors, different elements, whether it's milk, whether it's water. All makes different splashes. And it's different properties, different uh, viscosity of the liquids matters. And so I'll share those secrets. I have no problem so that you can go home and take 5,000 photos and get that one shot because that's what it actually takes. But on, on here at Out of Chicago, we actually have it down to a science where every shot you're going to get that shot, where you don't have to spend 5,000 pictures to get one good picture. Yeah. So it's, we've, with the help of a lot of my instructors, we've got it down to a pretty good science. I can't wait. It's, it's going to be awesome. All right, so February 10th, Winter Conference. Yes. Uh, if people are interested in finding out more about Chicago photography classes, where do they go? Uh, what, our website is www.chicagophotoclasses.com. Um, feel free to look us up. Uh, love to have you here. We hold a free class every Sunday, um, every Sunday at noon. It's a fun class. Uh, we hold everything from kids' photography programs uh, all the way down to eight years old. Uh, eight to 12 year old programs. 
uh, all the way to high school programs, uh, all the way up through advanced editing. Uh, through as advanced as Jim Walensky and other uh, great editors uh, push you through. And you're here in the Ravenswood community? Yes, we are at 4001 Ravens, North Ravenswood, and we're right on the corner of Irving Park and Ravenswood. Uh, and we encompass almost the entire first floor of the building now. Yeah, we're, we're growing. And we're growing. Going down into the basement. And we're, and we're in the basement also. And one of, we have uh, two digital labs encompassing uh, 30 computers and over 12 printers. Uh, so, yeah, we, we like printing, we like Lightroom, we like Photoshop, and we like photography. But more so, we love our community. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, the people love the instructors here. So. Yeah, we just, I can't say enough about our students and our instructors. I totally agree. Good. All right. Awesome. Thank you for doing all this. We'll see you February 10th. My pleasure. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. Yeah. Thank you. Yep.